Hello everybody, Steffi here from The Makers. Welcome to our live stream today making primroses. They're the simplest and easiest thing um, to needle felt, but they are really effective if you make lots of them and if you um, put them into a cluster, maybe on a terracotta plant pot or any other plant pot you have got for that matter. And they're not even, I can literally pick them off. I haven't even felted them on. So let's have a look um, if I'm, um, yeah, all working good at my end. So Alicia says she can't hear me. I don't know why, but um, I'm, I'm all turned on. Okay, bear with me a second. Right, okay, this time it wasn't a Steffi blooper, it was a Leisha blooper. Ha ha ha. Okay, right, back to the primroses. Sorry, I even pressed the wrong screen for a second. But here the uh, the primroses, like I said, they're not even uh, needle felted on there. I've just put them on there because I'm using this pot for other purposes, um, for other decorations as well. So we'll show you how to needle felt uh, these flowers. Hopefully I'll get a, a nice cluster um, made up. They are a project that um, originally are featured here in the Making Simple Needlefelds book that has got lots and lots of um, projects in there, all sectioned into different um, seasons. So obviously we're in spring at the moment, oh, hoping to get there soon. Well, I can't wait anyway. And um, I, But before I have a quick look through the book with you, I will um, just have a look who's here today. I um my um my other little computer here has just decided to reboot itself so I haven't actually seen how many people are watching already but if you have just joined us primrose primroses today needle felted and they're a great stash buster so um do get all your all your little scraps of wool out mostly what you need is sort of a bright happy colorful rainbow here with uh, pinks and um um oranges yellows and even purple and then you're totally um, in the business making these you need tiny tiny amounts so you don't need half as much as I've got here oh yeah here we go let's have a look who's here today hello Jane um, Jane's not able to stay for the whole day as visiting her dad at um, later on um, and um, Ashley is there V Ava Diane um, it's it's really nice because um, I've met a lot of you over the weekend during the dragon needle felting retreat and what fantastic dragons have been made. If you do want to have a look, pop over onto our Facebook page um, and have a look um, on our main poster. They've also been featured on Instagram. So um, do it's definitely worth having a look. I was hoping to have a photo here today to show you, but um, I, I gave a little bit too little notice. Um, Alison is there. Catherine, yes, another one that I met at the weekend and saw at the weekend. I met you before. Lorna is there. Vampire Venom. Karen. Awkward Prawn. Another Karen. Um, um, Erica is there. Hello, Erica. Marion. Melanie. Alex. Christine. Um, Rose. Donna. Katie. Angela, Lisette, and uh, oh, Lisette from um, from Bel Belgium, I think. Um, so that's a new one. We haven't had anybody watch from Belgium as far as I know. This is live. When you watch live, there's always a chance to win a prize um, from us. And our prize today is a two pound, two times fifteen pound gift voucher to give away. And all we want you to do is is to tell us what's your favorite flower and what do you love about it and pop those comments into the comments um, on the YouTube stream but also on Thursday when we do the repeat live stream on Facebook you can uh, pop the comments in there too and then Alicia will pick at random a winner in fact two winners for each live stream so we are giving away four 15 pound gift vouchers so if you're watching today um, which is the 25th of 
uh, January 2022. If you're watching live today, then you can win yourself two £15 gift vouchers or you can have another chance of doing so on the 27th at 7 p.m. over on our Facebook page. And all we want you to tell us is what's your favorite flower and what do you love about it? What do you love about that flower? So um, it should be interesting to see that because I feel flowers have sort of different messages in them. Maybe you associate it with a memory. Maybe it was somebody, um, you know, somebody who you loved, love and knows favorite flower. And um, yeah, I'd love to hear what, what are your favorite flowers. Um, I love primroses um, because they are always like a first bright sparkle of um, or bright spot of uh, spring announcing itself. And they, they really are. Um, what I love about them too is that the colors changes ever so slightly. So there are nuances of oranges and reds and so on. And I think it's to do with how um, far, how fresh they are basically, how far down the line uh, before they, uh, they wilt. Um, but it adds a really nice, um, splash and they can be indoors and outdoors which is a nice thing too these are preferably to be kept indoors I guess all you need for this is a, a colorful bit of wool and water soluble paper however we will not be dissolving the water soluble paper this is one of those makes where you don't need to dissolve the water soluble paper they're perfect um, just like this but I promised you to have a little flick through making simple needle felts if you don't know this is one of the books that I've written um, out of four. The um, the first one is the uh, making needle felted animals, the second one is this one, the third one is a doll making book and the fourth is is the um, m uh, making needle felted fairy folk which will be available as of mid-February but you can already pre-order it from our website. So um, what what's nice about this book is that you have a whole section on just techni techniques and um, what tools and accessories you might be using, different wools, different fibers, um, how how you measure, you know, what is a wisp and what is a pinch. Um, we use these we use these phrases, and you might not know what on earth um, that all refers to. So you get a really nice little bible of um, um, te um, words, technical uh, words, but also things that I've made up myself, and. Um, and then the first section is all about um, is all about about uh, people and um, fairies and angels. So if you if you want to get into making um, people and creatures, then this is the first section that that's quite useful to have. This probably is sort of an was an inspiration for me to continue further on making fairies and really get into it. And of course now we have our monthly um, fairy subscription box. Now here comes spring, hooray, with um, the spring projects. Now the book was written with with everybody in mind in many ways, I guess. Um, children, people with children, people who don't have children but want to still needle felt. And um, some of the projects are really, really simple, like these really simple butterflies. They're already featured on our YouTube channel. They're, there is no needle felting required with those and you can make them with your little ones as well. Then of course we've got the primroses, a really simple little bunny. This is all the spring projects here. The baby barn owl, you will all know because we're doing that as a kit and have done for a couple of years now. And then here are the primroses with a template which I will be using very shortly when we start. The hen and chicks are actually scheduled um, and they will be live streamed on the 22nd of February. And what is, um, what's special about this is that the little hen has got like a hollow inside her where the chicks can hide out. And um, it's such a fun project, especially, like I say, if you're needle felting for children. Since then, however, I have I've known people do this and they're hiding an Easter egg inside as well. So that's a really good idea maybe to have this hen so that she can sit on a on a on an Easter egg as that's uh, coming at some point or maybe just um maybe just an egg warmer why not it can definitely be adapted to this this is a very stylized and simple blue tit in the spring section and um, and then we're moving on to summer so let's stick with uh, spring for now remember you can ask questions during the live stream you can um, pop them into the comments and then if it's something that Alicia can't answer she'll feed it back to me and I shall um, do my best to answer it now these primroses work definitely best in 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 numbers so what I'm going to do now first of all is put that book to one side for a minute 
and I'm going to uh, cut a strip of water soluble paper um, because um, by the way you can buy this at our website we do two different sizes one is um, a big sheet of a meter by 90 centimeter and 90 centimeters and the other one is um, I believe it's 45 by 50 centimeters you really really don't need a lot of water soluble paper to make the flowers or in in general we use it for quite small items I think the largest we do is is um, for butterflies so I'm going to cut a couple of strips here of the sheet that's already cut into. The thing about water soluble paper if you don't know it yet is that um, this particular water soluble paper looks a little bit like a dried up wet wipe. Um, sorry I wanted to show you that in the big camera or not on the big camera. Um, it looks a little bit like a dried up wet wipe and I've told this story before that I've actually used it uh, like uh, I thought it was water soluble paper and tried to rinse it out during wa um, underwater and then it didn't go out and then I realized I've made the mistake I found a, um, a dried up wet wipe. The reason why I'm comparing it to that is because there are lots of other water soluble papers out there and this is the only one that we found works for needle felting. So there's another type that it feels quite plasticky, it's quite thick. If you use that it um, has a habit of breaking needles, not a good idea. Um, there is also one that is um, it's literally a paper, feels, looks a little bit like greaseproof paper. You use that and all you do is you perforate um, the paper and then things just have a habit of falling apart. So this is the best water soluble paper. Um, it does completely dissolve. The, the, if you're using it for anything else where, for example, for the butterflies that I recently um, did a workshop with for the butterfly conservation, then um, you, you can use the, the um, it's almost like the dissolved starch or it's like a fabric stiffener in there um, that can stay in the wool and dry and then it makes your shape really stiff so that that sort of um, has, has that added advantage but um, I'm gonna have a quick look now what people are commenting on in terms of uh, what their favorite flower is and um, what's so special about that flower uh, Trying to uh, not read too much back from the back. Uh, gosh, lots of chatty people here. Oh, Car Catherine is back to work um, to a, a mountain of emails. I know, so you are watching this in your lunch break. That's nice. Um, so Karen asked if the if the weekend the retreat was what people expected. I think it was beyond what people expected. I think it was certainly beyond what I expected. The dragons, honestly, they were just the most magnificent, uh, spectacular, creative and outrageously um, beautiful dragons. Please, please do have a look on, um, on our Facebook page and have a look at some of them. I did say from the beginning, I said you can make this dragon, which is what the one that I made, and you'll be done. Or you can design your own dragon and it might take a little bit longer. And I think everybody uh, went down that route of um, challenge. Um, however, we were very lucky that, um, and that is the other thing that I can in all honesty say is this is the first retreat and I've, I've, I've run seven. The first retreat where I felt that the group was so collaborative, literally everybody was, everybody was lending a hand to each other and, um, and, and giving ideas and sharing, sharing um, materials and stuff. And um, I've been drum carding wool like like there was no tomorrow mixing the the exact um color that everybody wanted with added uh, added sparkle and all kinds of other fibers and we had we've had so much so much fun and the uh, and the results were absolutely um amazing so i'm i'm so yes um so um yes let's go back to flowers getting slightly a slight trucked here I'm actually putting a word out there what we should do for our summer retreat and the summer retreat is from the 15th to the 17th of July so it's it's literally um, another half year away and then we, we're doing um, something like this all over again it will be held at the wilderness wilderness center is which, which is where I live the accommodation compared to where we were just now is a lot more basic because it's actually an outdoors education center but you have the opportunity to sleep in a bell tent and if you have never done it you've got to do it or if you haven't done it for god knows how many years do it because it's there's nothing nicer than sleeping in a tent i sleep best in the fresh air and um 
Uh, of course, you don't have to. You can also sleep in, in the bottom part of a bunk bed. You don't even have to share a room. We will be putting details out very shortly. And I have put on our Everyone a Maker Facebook group a poll for people to give us ideas of what um, you might want to do. And somebody, and I think it was Carol, um, suggested why not make a green man. And I've jumped on that idea. And uh, that seems to be the top, the top favorite of people who are voting who probably won't even be going but it's good to know what um what what should happen especially as we're living here literally in the forest of dean a green man is just the best thing that um we can probably do so um yeah that that is at the moment i'm i'm 80 percent sure that we're going to make that project um oh did i get this wrong Okay, I'll, I'll find out later. Um, let's let's find out what flowers, what flavor, favorite flowers. Um, Rose says a rose, of course. Well, I wonder why. Uh, Karen says my favorite flower is a triffid because it teaches us humili humility and respect. Science fiction fan. Okay, I am not a science fiction person at all, so I have no idea what a what a um, a triffid is. Katie says my favorite flower is jasmine. Small but packs a powerful punch smell lovely i love um uh, jasmine for that smell um christine says the orchid it gives its beauty goes to sleep to come back and give give its beauties again and again nice um orchids they are so elegant oh people like orchids i have a few faves fave one is a uh, buddleia um Daffy D, because it looks stunning and smells amazing and butterflies love it okay great that's number one um Favorite flower says Ashley is the primrose. Reminds me of my granddad who never got to, I never got to met. His birthday was Primrose Day, nineteenth of April. Oh, that's nice. Um, you can make him um, special primroses and then get them out on the nineteenth of April. Lily of the Valley. Oh, I like Lily of the Valley gem too. Um, it's actually going to be our fairy in March, so you've got to look. You've got to look forward to that. There was always a huge patch growing just outside my grandmother's door. I love Lily of the Valley. Alex says, I love snowdrops, made my own wedding cake all through years ago and crystallized snowdrops for decoration. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> um, Awkward Prawn says, can't choose a favorite flower, but Rose, my daughter is named Rose. Daffodils, course Welsh. I love all the flowers. Um, Diane says, my favorite flower is the Freesia. It's the very first flower I received and it was given to me by my mum on my 16th birthday. I also think their scent is beautiful. You're certainly right. Um, Susan says, my favourite flower is lilies. They were the first bouquet that my husband bought me 31 years ago. Oh, you're all such sentimental romantics. Lorna says, flowers, I have so many sunflowers, big and bright like the sun. Roses were my grand's favourite flower and we had many when I was a child in Germany. Greenhouse full of them. Oh. I think roses are very popular in Germany. Karen says, um, oh yes, snowdrops fresh and lovely, though they make me cry. Too many sad memories. Oh no, that sounds sad. Um, oh, I like Aquilegia as well. So, uh, Vampire Venom says that's her favorite um, second one. No idea why, but I just love them. I love them because they're they're just one of those flowers that follows you around um we've had a uh, many a garden where it was completely destroyed by children dogs chickens um everything like that but aquilicia they were just always there and they um they sort of pop up to say don't worry we're here you can't um, get rid of us that easily so um yeah and they come in beautiful purple and pink and um white colors Erica says, I love Frisia's such a beautiful flower and a great smell in different colors. Oh my goodness. Okay, so there's lots of people saying that. Um, Catherine says, I love tulips, but not when the wind has blown them over. I know Erica has some lovely ones at the moment. Well, talking about tulips, we do have a little surprise for you in our um, one of our next um, sub boxes. Anyway, say no more. So let's get on with making these primroses and then I catch up a little bit more with the chat later on. So I told you about um, the template. Now, if, you're, if you haven't got um, this book and you want to make it, I'll give you a little secret in a minute of how um, this, temp this template can also be hand drawn. But first of all, I've got a blunt pencil because blunt pencils always work better with um, the, um, the good old water soluble paper because the sharp end doesn't get 
caught in it. It's quite fibrous, the paper. So I always work with a blunt pencil, not because I'm too lazy to sharpen it. And I'm literally just churning out a few. Now, some of you may have made the daisy chain with us last year. That was such a good project. It was just right for the time of the year and um, and having them all sort of um, felt it onto a little um, leaf garland. It was perfect. So I'm hoping that these primroses will just um, will evoke just the same thing in you wanting to make lots of them because um, these little flowers, they, they look they always look the most um, impressive when there's quite a few of them. So I'm just going to go down my water soluble paper, drawing on them and getting the template transferred onto the paper. And I, sh I can't quite get four on there. I try be a bit more sparing with my spacing out here. Um, I would say don't use a pen that's um, really juicy because the water soluble paper definitely doesn't like it. Ah, got a fourth one on that strip. I think my pencil is getting very blunt. And I'm going to leave it there. But what I will show you is, I um, just need a bit of a piece of paper to show you, which I don't have handy. Maybe down there. So I've got, a, I've got a temp another template here. I'm just going to draw on the back of it, so ignore this flower there. Or maybe not, that's too distracting, isn't it? I find, I find a piece of paper, just bear with me. I've tidied my workspace up, so everything's now in the right place. Maybe I can draw on the back of these little this little bag. If you um, want to make the template, but you haven't you haven't got it, it's actually made out of one out of four hearts. So you can draw um, if you draw the heart and put them all next to each other, then you get the template too. So you you draw the hearts like I just have done. Oh, it's squeaky paper to draw on it. Um, can you see how if you ignore the fact that there are lines um, because you're separating the hearts, that is basically the shape of it. So if you want to freehand draw that, you can. And I'll just show you here on the, on the water soluble paper, if I extended these lines, they would be making hearts. Can you see? So you can actually make your um, your own template up by um, doing this. Right, so the next thing we need is a felting mat. I'm going to use this, our earth-friendly felting mat, and I'm going to cut a little, um, I cut each shape out. Um, I don't, we don't need to have them on a strip. And I'm going to start with one. Start with a coarse needle, um, and then um, choose your wool. So maybe I'm going to go with orange for now. And now I've got to fill in the inside with the wool. So I'm just stabbing this down first of all away from the edge, working my way towards the edge and then I fit it inside that shape as neatly as I can manage. And then felt it down and now I'm working my way literally around every single little um, shape on the outside here so to fit it in. Now when you're felting flat, especially onto water soluble paper, you need to lift your shape off regularly because what happens is that you are felting so um, condensed all the time in one area that the whole thing felt straight onto the felting mat. So you need to be gently lifting your shape off as you're working your way around it. Um, you can do this very um, consistently just with one single needle work your way around it make sure that you are following the um, the shape so that you have that dip where it needs to dip and the slight round shape where it needs to stay round and um, working all the way around 
the shape. It's one of those. Um, it's. It, I think it's one of those mindless um, project where I often call, I call it mindless crafting. We actually don't need to think at all. All you do is just a little bit of time. This is a nerve calming exercise. Just something where you don't have to need where you don't need to read instructions. You just sit down and just take take make a cup of tea. Maybe you've got some story on in the background. Maybe you have TV on in the background. Just don't take your eyes off whilst you're stabbing so you don't stab into your fingers. And and just take a little time for yourself to um, make some of these uh, primroses. It doesn't always have to be a complicated project. Sometimes the simpler simpler projects serve um, a purpose of, of um, grounding, putting things back into an equilibrium just taking taking the sort of heat out of everything bringing you back to your basic um self and um and and it doesn't always have to be challenging sometimes it's actually really quite nice to take a break from always needing to make something perfect something grandiose something um new this is one of those projects where you can basically don't have to spend any money just use the wool that you've got and um, and just work your way around these little petals as you go along with your felting needle lift it off regularly and felt it down if you are in a bit of a rush and you want to speed your work up then of course you can use um, a multi-tool um, the the five needle felting tool that comes that that's made by Clover is is has actually become my favorite. I was used to say, oh, the seven needle felting tool is much better, and the Clover one is actually not that different because you just pay more, uh, but it does the same thing. But I've I have actually um, had to review that it's not true. The Clover one is of better quality, and um, I can show you why too in a minute. You can just see that I'm trying to fit the wool more into the edges as I'm going round. And just that last one, and then I, I show you what I mean about the difference of the two tools. Right. So I'm going to neaten up the edges a little bit more. Um, remember, because we're going to cut the um, water soluble paper off as well. So if, if for whatever reason you, you can neaten it up that way, you can do that too, of course. But let's have a look. So this is what it looks like from the back. All the wool has been pushed through the water soluble paper and um, it's a, it's sort of a, a semi, semi felted at the moment. I need to felt this down a little bit more. The um, clover tool looks like this. The seven needle felting tool looks like that. So from the outside, there's not much difference. But from the inside, you have got five needles um, sitting side by side on this tool here, but they're not uh, quite as closely spaced together as they are on this one. And I think that is what makes this tool a more superior tool than this one. You've got seven needles, but and they're really, really close together. I think that the spacing out gives it more felting capacity. So when you've got it here, I can stab this quite comfortably into that flower now, going all the way into the earth mat and flattening it and making it a lot smoother really fast. I might have to just sort of stab into the edges again to maintain the shape of the petals. Might even have to add more wool. But in general, the tool does its job. It's pushed even more wool through to the other side. Now, if I use the um, the blue tool, for starters, it really doesn't like the, the density of either of what's is felted and what the mat either. So with this one, I have to really push hard to get it in. It does go in, but it feels like really forced, and I'm not entirely sure if it's doing much good. You can, of course, use um, a brush mat underneath it but then you've just got another piece of, of kit which um, if you have to buy two things and you can just be using one and that works absolutely fine I, I don't even have to strain my arm very much to get it in you can also use the three needle felting tool to speed things up that works a little bit more focused that's absolutely fine too and to be honest um, 
the um, the one that uh, comes in the blue version is not that much difference. The only difference between these two is that if you have to change needles, you didn't know there was going to be a, a whole lesson on needle felting tools, it's actually much harder to get them out, um, especially when there's three in there. So you really have to sort of like, and also put them in, whereas this one here, when you open that, the needles do come out really easy. And um, because they're sort of, as they overlap slightly, and you can also feed them in much more easy because there's only one channel to go in. With this one, you have to um, sort of try and find the channel somehow. It doesn't always want to go in there. Anyway, there's only two needles in there at the moment. So, so in terms of quality, I do think that the Clover products are better than the um, uh, the non-branded ones, but. It doesn't mean to say they don't work. They just work slightly less efficiently. So now I've got my little primrose here. I'm going to use the scissors. I'm going to cut around the petal shape, making sure that's a nice, neat cut. And also that you do go in between the petals, so you have that distinct shape. Saying that, to be honest, even if you didn't do that, once you've made a, f um, a whole load, you you sort of mi it you kind of um, miss the individual um, flower look, so it just looks like it's great because you've got lots of them in one place. Yeah. And um, one the water soluble paper is still in there. You can still see it sort of slightly on the edges. And then all you need to do is to finish this flower off is use a little bit of the um, that orange uh, that that sort of yolky yellow color golden yellow as we call it and stab it in the middle and as you stab it in the middle allow the petals to sort of lift up lift up on the sides um, because that's the effect that we want we want the flower to sort of be ever so slightly cup shape and um, you can probably get a oh, better result just going for it with the three needle felting tool can you see how the flower is slightly lifting off? And that's exactly what we want to achieve. And that is one flower done. There. And that's all there is to it. It's, it is really such a simple project. But remember, these look great in clusters. So as soon as you put um, a few together, that is when they become effective um, and, and, um, and really sort of make an impact in terms of um, the, the punchiness of the color um, and I will be making another couple but um, be before I do that I'm just gonna um, check in how everybody is I will also tell you that uh, we have um, now completed the butterfly conservation um, um, live stream but you can still buy the kits from the Butterfly Conservation Trust because the live stream is available as a recording so if you want to support a good course you can still do that However, we do have still got um, the Liver Trust to look forward to, and that is happening on the um, 3rd of February at 6.30 via Facebook, a live stream via Facebook. And those teddy bears are super cute. I have seen um, uh, Donna made a whole rainbow, uh, a, a whole rainbow range of them, and they're just the super, they're just the cutest thing ever. I really want to make rainbow teddy bears as well. I just wish I had more time in, in my day. But they looked so super cute. Honestly, you must, um, you you must make this teddy bear. It is a, ve a very very simple pattern. It's very suitable for um, beginners. It's all made from um, pa from separate needle felted parts, so there's no wire inside. Um, we are using little glue in eyes for the for the teddy bear's eyes, but if you if you wanted it all wool, you could also needle felt them. And of course, you get to make a little heart because um, because you care. If you care, you make a bear. And uh, the packs are still available. You can make a, um, a gold one or a maroon colored one. You can pick your color. And um, and that will all happen on the 3rd of February. So you've still got time to get your pack. Just order it directly from the Liver Trust. Um, right, let's have a quick look what people are um, writing about their favorite flowers. Um, flowers. Lorna says, flowers, I have so many flowers, big and bright like the sun, roses were my grand's favorite flower. 
and we had many when I was a child. Oh no, I've already read that. Um, I read that. Oh yes. So okay. Sorry. Uh, my favorite. Oh, Marian says my favorite is an apricot rose. It was my wedding. It was in my wedding bouquet, and it's such a rich color. My bridesmaids were in apricot as well. So whenever I see the rose, it reminds me of that day. Oh, that's so nice. Laura says hi everyone. My favorite flower are fuchsias. I always think of my mum when I see them, as she had a collection. They vary so much in colour and remind me of little bells. Oh, that's nice. Um, the fuchsia, I don't know if you um, have ever done this as a child, but I remember the fuchsias, but before they, before they pop open, we used to go round and pop them open, like they made that very satisfying plop, 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 and um, um, just gave them a little helping hand. They probably were very appreciative of it. Um, Oh, Trixie says, I love snap snapdragons, also called fairy flowers. Fabulous shape, colours and names. What's not to love? Well, you know, you can get these little, they look like little snapdragons, but they're like wallflowers. And I remember um, walking with my children and sometimes, you know, when you're trudging along and they're like really slow and you think, oh, come on, come on, hurry up. We need to get home, walk faster, but you can't carry them all because there's too many of them. So um, I remember that we, we always used to, that was sort of a, um, one of the one of the landmarks where we um, got to and I knew oh this was you no know, getting getting on the way home I would say come on come on quickly now let's get to the wall where there's the talking flowers and with these kind of flowers if you push them in the right place it looks like they're opening them opening and closing their mouths and I would always say push the flowers and I would always say hello children are you on your way home hurry up now hurry up now and my children were like ah oh, it's the talking flowers and it was the funniest thing ever that um they were like let's walk to the talking flowers see what they've got to say and it was only a couple of years ago uh, we uh, i went for a walk with my with some of my children including my oldest daughter who's now 19 so a couple of years ago she would have been maybe 17 and she said, oh, mom, look, there's talking flowers. And up until that point, we never, we, I'd never spoken to them about this and, uh, from when they were little. And she remembered it really well. And she said, look, there's the talking flowers in the wall. And um, it, was the, it, was so, it was so heartwarming to think that they remembered the, talk, the, the talking flowers. So you never know. You see all these memories that are associated with flowers as you are proving in all your, in all your uh, lovely comments here. Uh, Fiona says, my favorite flower is a daffodil. I love the shape and bright colors and they bring an end to winter and the start to spring. Yeah, very bright. Um, Catherine loves tulips. Oh yes, I've read that too. Um, I, I always plant roses in the garden for lost loved ones. I have ones for my dad, two close friends and for my beloved cats, Peaches, Jessie and Lily. That's a nice thing. Plant a flower to remind your um, most loved four-legged and two-legged creatures um, or maybe no-legged creatures whatever whatever pet you have got um, Donna says love my most flowers as they brighten up dull days they certainly do sunflowers are my best as Helen hello Helen I saw you at the weekend too um, Julie says sorry I'm late um, hi fellow fluffsters in preparation for this, I got a primrose from my garden and pressed it to use for a template to draw around. Oh, that's a good idea. Um, good idea, that is. Um, the dragons are awesome, says Rose. Okay, I'm going to go and do another another flower now because um, we, need, um, we need at least another one. Don't you agree? So I'm going to cut my next template off. I think I was a bit ambitious drawing around all these... Um, flowers here and now I'm just going to use a slightly different orange because um, I do like that that sort of varying color way that they go as they because there's so many usually on a on a plant that uh, they cut they, they don't all flower exactly the same time so some of them are slightly older than um, others and then um, as they become older they change color but in a nice way they don't they don't um, you know not in a bad way it's maybe maybe a little bit like people just because we get older we don't look less beautiful we just change colors basically and so um, for me the primrose demonstrates that beautifully if you look at a primrose plant there are always some that are um, slightly different color and they're actually no different in terms of their vibrancy they're still quite vibrant color 
just maybe slightly darker. Um, and I think that's a that is a really nice thing of imagining that primroses are like people. We're all we're all on the same on the same bush. We just flower at different times, but just because we're a little bit older doesn't mean to say that we're less pretty. There, having a philosophical moment again. Um, so what else can I tell you about the weekend? Well, I think what I loved the most about the weekend was was literally the uh, coming together of so many different people and yet we all worked together as one. And I think that that was the most beautiful thing to witness that um, everybody came from a different walk of life with a different story to tell. And it was um, quite, um, it was quite a, a, an interesting thing for me too to have read that morning of the retreat on so on the Friday morning I was driving through our little town and the local stationery shop they had a they had a saying in the window and it said that um, everybody has got something they don't talk about and I thought wow that 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 timing was was perfect because when all these people arrived from different parts of the UK and even um, some somebody came over from Carol came over from Ireland. Um, far the, we had people coming from Scotland and um, all around. And um, I just thought I must remember that because you know not we don't we all have got something that we don't talk about and um, and that determines us um, or determines a lot of who we are and what we do and how we behave and what how we react to things. And I think a lot of people who came at the weekend, it 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 took it, it took a lot of courage to come, because um, the last two years haven't been easy to get out, and there's a lot of um, sort of anxiety that needs to be overcome. Um, and so I I was in total admiration of how brave people were, how willing they were to um, lend a hand and be be just there for others too. And uh, we've had fun, we've laughed, that's so important. Alicia had a, a had such a funny quiz that night and we did laugh. We did laugh a lot at her as well. <laughs> she didn't mind. She's the funniest person with her American um, American um, words. That um, Who am I to say? I, I do the same in German, but um, I, I absolutely loved it. It was absolutely brilliant. And um, so I think um, we've learned a lot about what the meaning of different words in um, in English and in the American language, and uh, certain words must not be used. Um, we heard, so um, yes, I won't give you any examples, but um, I'm sure Alicia can enlighten you if you ever spend time with her. And um, and then we had um, food. I think I I think it's fair to say that uh, there was never any shortage of food. So it started with breakfast, then with homemade biscuits um, at 11, then with with a cooked lunch, then with homemade cake at four, and then with a cooked supper at half past six. So it just felt like I've, I felt I came away eating more than I ever do, uh, probably about twice the amount than what I normally eat in a day. But um, we certainly worked it all off by stabbing that needle continuously. So I can't wait for the summer retreat. The summer retreat is in many ways a little bit different because there's a lot more... Um, I don't know, I want to say there's more outdoors involved, but it's only because there's actually daylight. Um, you know, we, we, um, the days are still so short at the moment, whereas um, in the middle of the summer, obviously, you've got a much earlier uh, morning and a much... I, I wanted to go out and go for a walk early, but it was so dark, it's, it's still not possible. But whereas in the summer, you can actually get up at 6 o'clock and enjoy the outdoors. And then, of course, if you're staying in a bell tent, you do have to walk um, outside. There's no way, no other way to get around it. So I'm hoping that uh, we have many people joining us. And um, and if you are interested in that summer retreat, then drop us an email, info at the makers with two S's, and just say, I'm interested in the summer retreat. Please keep me in the loop. And as soon as we have um, decided what the project is, we're pretty much clear on the prices. They're, they're going to be very similar to last year. So the, the summer retreat in general is slightly cheaper than the winter retreat. But um, that is no reflection on the quality um, whatsoever. It's more a reflection on the um, 
maybe on the comfort of the sleeping arrangements but i'm gonna be really open with you from the beginning because i don't want anybody booking on and saying oh i didn't know how to sleep in a tent you don't have to sleep in a tent but the tent is um the obvious option right i filled this flower now so i'm going to cut around that as well and then i'm going to fill it with the yellow so the yellow is sort of the common theme with all of the different colors that seems to be what they um, have in the middle that golden yellow that spills out slightly into the petals and I think the primroses are mostly recognized by their um, colors that they uh, produce which is um, usually sort of oranges reds purple and yellow I think th they're definitely white ones as well so you could make some white ones needle felt white onto there and then just put a little bit of yellow in the middle stab it in so that the petals lift off on the side they definitely lift off better when you use a multi-tool that gives them more of an incentive and then um, another one is made put that to one side there and you've got two have been made um, so where are we now um, Let's have a look at some of more of the comments. Oh, Lorna says she does um, historic reenactments, so love tents in summer. We do get people here on the wilderness who do, who do the reenactment. It's always um, a total amusement for my children to watch when people run around like children, um, pretending to shoot each other and um, telling them to get off their treasure. So it's quite it's quite a fun thing to watch. Um, they tend not to talk to us, um, so even if we say hi, I think it's because we are not um, part of their world, so we, we are obviously not, not at all existent. Oh my goodness, I love sweet peas. Sweet peas are just so nice, Karen says, yes. I love, the small, uh, love them small and my grandmother always grew them. I love sweet peas. I love them because they're just... It's just the variation of the colors and um, I love them outside just looking at at them how they just pop up um, Oh, Karen's got to go Bye, Karen you probably missed all of that what I've just said um, Pauline says my oh Pauline I met you too my favorite flower is the sunflower as it's all it always looks happy uh, Pauline says hi Steffi and Alicia just popping by while hubby is shopping we'll watch properly later oh um, Aqualegia are great self seeders. Ah, that's why they follow you around because you don't have to do much. They just l take care of themselves. I have stacks in the garden. Um, hellebores are always welcome in the winter. Uh, okay, no idea what that means. I'm not going to even read that. Um, roses are my favorite. So delicate and they have a lovely scent. What's Orga lost? Come on, somebody enlighten me. Um, I love the heart flower template. So easy. Yes, absolutely. Would love to attend the summer retreat, but not sure about the green man. Would it be possible to have a couple of options, perhaps? I don't know yet. It's the honest answer. It depends how big we're going with this retreat. We might be able to break into two groups. But what we've done so far is always have one project um, for the people to work on. Um, because I think that's just the easiest um, to to manage and so that the groups don't split because it's really nice to have um, one big group but um, I have a little think about it it did it did occur to me um, Diane says I've just treated myself to the large mud and it's brilliant large small medium they're all brilliant um, Peggy has joined us my favorite flower is the burr Nelly eyes Nelly Isluck Orchid or Orchid, I don't actually know what that is. Um, Jane says my favorite flower is a sunflower. They always turn to face the sun and they symbolize unwavering faith and unconditional love. Um, <laughs> Angela says, Oh dear, more must have gadgets. I can hear my credit card weeping. <laughs> Well, you don't have to buy it now. Just put it on your birthday list or Christmas list. It'll come round. Um, Catherine says, you have to put the color on yourself through nail varnish is best. Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, yes. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm reading ahead again. Um, okay. I think we're talking about felting needles and that they're color 
coded. We have color coded felting needles, but when you buy these tools, they obviously don't have a color on the top. But I do know that the the um, the prim, uh, not the prim, that's another tool that hasn't got tool uh, hasn't got needles in it. That the clover tools, this one has definitely got medium needles in it, and the and this one has got fine needles in it. Sim it's exactly the same with these two. Um, I don't know if that was what was being discussed, but I'm just um, hijacking that conversation now. And I, th I wonder if I should do another one, one more flower that is. Uh, oh, hi, Pam. Sorry, Pam, we, neither Alicia nor I could watch on Sunday you making the lovebirds. How did they go? Um, because we were still at the uh, winter retreat. But um, yeah, tell us, how did they go? I haven't even had time to have a sneak peek. Um, I think, Alicia, it might be a good idea to um, um, to um, to to um, what's the word? Draw a winner. That's it. Draw two winners, please. And I'm going to show you now. I'm going to dismantle this whole thing, and I'm going to show you what I've done with um, with the the pot. Okay, take off all the flowers, and um, all I've done is I've stuffed the flower pot with wool. It's probably all kinds of wool I had sort of bits and pieces off. So these curls are, are only on the surface. So there's all kinds of wool in there. If you've got any, oh, oh look, there's an old foam mat in there even. I didn't know that was in there. Oh, and more foam. Aha, see, didn't even know that was inside. So stuff it with whatever you can um, and then build up a nice bulging. I have, it's not needle felted or anything. Just build up a nice bulging surface like that smooth it out and then I've just put lots of these green curls over the top to be perfectly honest it, I've over egged the curls a bit you don't need half as many as this so you could have way less curls you can felt this on obviously um, you don't need to just lay it on but I'm, I'm pretty certain I probably did that as a quick improvisation at, at the time and um, and then all you need to do is um, lay the flowers on top how you feel fit. Keep the colors together because that's the important bit is that you um, make your um, make your um, um, what's it called the clusters so that the colors are together and and there you can see the different type of oranges. There's even a red one that's snuck in there. And um, I have used mountain sheep orange and I've used red. Um, orange uh, New Zealand merino and then poppy red in here and then of course I would sort of probably continue with the pinks oh look there's even some green still left that I haven't put back in you can use more of the hot pink but I've just got that one here at the moment and then work your way around the pot and then I got finally We've got two winners for the Tuesday one o'clock live stream on the 25th of January 2022 and that is Peggy and Lorna. Um, if you could please email us at um, um, to info at the makers dot co dot uk makers with two s's and let us know that you are one of the winners to win the 15 pound gift voucher then we will get in back in touch and get all your details and of course the same will be for the thursday winners email us at info at the makers dot co dot uk um, good luck to those of you who um, who yet have got a chance to win and um, anyway that's basically how I've put them together now you can fasten them onto the plant pot I just haven't done that because I am um, gonna take them all off and use it for something else but you can um, fasten them on and they look really really um, the best in numbers that is definitely a message I can give you here um, make sure you have them all nicely put up in numbers and then um, you've got a very happy little um, spring flower uh, pot already in your in your um, in your home, and it makes a lovely gift as well. Um, so now one of one of the things you might have spotted our little quack quack. Um, I know quack quack. That's what they say in German. Ribbit ribbit in English. But um, our little oh gosh, he's fallen down now. <laughs> um, frog prints and you can still can get your 
um, frog prints. Oh, look, he's just popping his head over the edge of the screen there. And uh, the reason why I'm mentioning this is because these are the next live streams coming up. So you've got um, next week, Tuesday, which is actually the 1st of February, where we are unboxing our sub boxes at 11 a.m. So that's a different time to our normal normal slot. And then finally, on the 8th of February, we're going to do the Valentine's Frog Prince. And uh, he will be just in time for Valentine's Day, or maybe you just do him anyway because he looks cute and he's hugging hard and then we have um, on the 15th of February we will be doing the bluebell fairy together as a make along which of course is the February makers box so that's that is what's coming up but you can definitely get your um, frog prints still so um, pop onto our website and uh, um, get get there get in get in there quickly because I know we're running quite low on um, on kits that's all there is to um, say from me today I hope you enjoyed that quite relaxed quite simple um, tutorial for a change where you didn't have to rush you can now go off and make lots of the flowers if you want to make um, a whole plant pot full of them and thank you so much for watching if you're not done so already give us the thumbs up um, subscribe to our channel tell your friends about it and um, as always we will think up all kinds of interesting um, projects for you throughout the whole of the year so keep watching out for it and if you're subscribed you'll get a message every time we are live thank you so much for watching and um, i'll leave you now take care everybody bye